Okay, this is the Buchanan Nomads attempt at pizza, homemade pizza. Um, we seem to have mislaid the mixing bowl. We've turned the boat inside out and can't find it. We know we had it. We saw it on the day we left, but we haven't seen it since, so we're using a pan. We don't have a functioning oven. We have an oven, but it doesn't work. So we've got this, which is called an Omnia, and you get polo mint pizzas. So I don't know why I'm bothered with weighing scales, because it's going to be bucket chemistry. So we're just making slightly different sort of pizza base. So for the pizza base, we're not going to do a traditional pizza. We are going to go for a beer bread pizza because that's all we have on board. We just have to use the ingredients we have. We don't have any sugar. Uh, we do have self-raising flour. So I've weighed out 200 grams of self-raising flour, which is a guess because I really don't know how much it should be because the recipe I have is in cups. Um, and we're going to use the pan to mix it. So. Here goes. Okay, I also don't have anywhere to melt the butter because we don't have a microwave, so I'm going to use oil, which is a cheat. And I'm not gorgeous, Brian, so I can't open beer with my hands, so I'm going to have to use a tin opener to open it. I haven't got Fraser here to film because Fraser is trying to drill into somebody else's boat lock because the guy got stranded and towed in by the lifeboat and he accidentally locked his keys in his boat, so he's drilling his lock for him. So hopefully he'll be back. So what I'm aiming for here is a not runny texture but just a soft batter that I can put into the Omnia oven. And hopefully we're going to have to cook that beforehand because otherwise it'll be too soggy before we put the toppings on. And now comes the next tricky part because I have to light the paraffin stove and to use, do that you have to use meths to preheat the burners. So I fill the meths up to a, a level about there roughly said bucket chemistry nobody knows how much exactly and then I'll have to go off film because lighting this is a precision task I have to get the lighter ready for when the meths first goes on so there we go that's the meths lighting now and that preheats the burner and once it's preheated the meth dies down and then we relight it again and unfortunately it sometimes goes a bit yellow and smelly because there's a lot of paraffin as well spills down there over the times it's a very very old stove this oh it's nearly gone out she takes longer than that. Ten minutes later. And now the ring is successfully lit. I don't know if you can get down low enough to show you, but the ring is successfully lit. Paraffin is burning beautifully. I can't lift this for long, but there's the dough, the batter it is really into this. And the way this works is the heat comes up the middle and then it moves around over the top and down the sides and it works like an oven. It's called an Omnia oven and it's designed for boats and camping. So it's the only oven we have, we have to make use of it. And your man's back here after a beer and helping a friend. Oh yes, and I didn't use all didn't the beer for the beer, beer press, so he's about to finish that off. Um, and he's been helping this neighbour. Fraser's doing his bit to help. And he's cutting up the salami and the ham, which is pretty much all that our little tiny local shop had in that we could go do as pizza topping. Um, he's helping himself with a beer at the same time. Self-raising flour is all we had. We didn't have any plain flour. And we don't have any pizza toppings, so we're using tomato, garlic, and basil. Uh, ooh, Tesco finest, don't usually splash out on that. Sun dried tomato, garlic, and basil sauce. So, Fraser's doing a sterling job there. Slightly plastered, but doesn't really matter. And the Omnia's hissing away here nicely, but not much action, I don't think, to the beer bread yet. No. It'll take a while to cook, I think. Close up of the meat cutting action here. He says he should have been a barber. I didn't catch that on film. And just to, for you to understand what it's like living on a boat, we've decided we're going to put sweet corn on as well. We forgot we had some. And our tins, or some of our tins, are right at the back there. And just notice that we have to take the labels off and we label them on the top because otherwise we don't know what they are because we had to take the labels off because they get really damp and gungy in a boat because everything in a boat gets damp eventually. Right, there's another tricky part. The, the, Beer bread has started to rise. <laughs> spread this. Fraser, drunk Fraser, is going to try and spread some of this strange tomato stuff on the top of it. And again, we don't have much in the way to try and burn, not to burn himself on the extreme heat that comes through the hole at the top. It's like feeding an active volcano. <laughs> Oh, good stuff, well done. Ah, missed a bit. Oh, 
I'm going to be cutting a leaflet. <laughs> Lost a few hairs on your arm there, I think. All right, get the lid back on. Put the rest on yet? Yeah, we'll get the lid on. Right, I'm going to lose the hairs on my arm this time because I'm going to try and get cheese on here without dropping it into the middle bit. Isn't it easy? Rick Stein, eat your heart out. <laughs> yes, we're in the... This is a proper Ouch. chef at work. That's hot, by the way. <laughs> this is um, Rick Stein's homeland we're in, Padstow. Every second restaurant is a Rick Stein seafood restaurant, Rick Stein delica, delicatessen, Rick Stein chippy, you name it. Right, different sort of... Oh no, dropped a bit. Hang on. Ouch, that's hot by the way. Ah, it's melting. Ow, ow, got it. Bit of drama there, folks. <laughs> Mozzarella going on next. I like lots of cheese on my pizzas. Lots okay. of cheese going on. Very sore if you get caught by those flames coming up the middle. Very sore. Definitely. I'll get a row from Laura for sticking my hand into the into the packet, but contaminating it with my hand. But that's the only way you can really do it. I missed a bit there, I think. There we go, right, Perfect. lid back on for now. Topping, we've only got ham, salami and sweet corn. We do have some mushrooms, we just couldn't be bothered chopping them up. So, there goes the salami, a big lump of it everywhere. <laughs> not distributed as cleanly as I would like to see it, but there you go, it's just not called on below cookery. It's survival cookery. <laughs> like the lucky slice with all the salami. Um, <laughs> You'll lose a few more hairs again then. I've never had so much fun, this is great. Oh, I saw some go on the floor there. We haven't got dogs here anymore to eat that one then. Just pick it up, put it back on. Right, and last of all, the sweet corn. Magic ingredient. Oh, we have no idea. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is going to actually work or not. It could be a complete and utter disaster, but sure, at least we've tried. And Tabitha's chicken, by the way, was amazing. Chicken pizza, here we go, lid back on, oh and now we wait. Burnt hair. Oh, yes, ball the arms where the hairs are burnt off. <laughs> roasting. Okay we're going to try and video the taste test. Now it's scorching scorching hot and it was really hard to get out of the pan but Fraser's going to cut into a piece. The beer bread base and a mixture of mature cheddar and mozzarella on top with a sort of weird tomato. Ooh, mm. it's a good reaction. Excellent. Delicious. Good. You'd say that anyway. <laughs> good, right. I'm going to have mine now. So I'm going to taste it now. The base is really crispy, perfectly done. This is beer bread base and the tomato on top has started to ooze into the surface, which is great. And uh, everything's melted and hot and beautiful. So here goes. I'm about to try this. Mmm, you can taste the beer. Mm. Really compliments the flavours of the tomato and the ham. Actually, I didn't think that was going to work, but it really has. I'm going to do this again. It's really oh. good. Mmm, that's so good.